Welcome to Physique, the free energy special interest group where science meets spirituality in the quest for truth and knowledge to free humanity and transform this planet into a paradise. Hello, hi, I'm Crystal. Uh, we have uh, Coaches, Pontus, Hefzger, Fresh Frazzle, James Rink here at Physic, welcoming you to our 108th Physic meeting. Physic is a platform where science meets spirituality and we meet once a month. And today is the 11th of January, 2023. Happy New Year to all. Uh, we start at 6.30 p.m. GMT Greenwich Meridian Time, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and European Time is 7.30 p.m. So join us when we or go to our website through visionpeace.com forward slash physic.html. Click on join us and you receive invitations to join our meeting because we have some of the most brilliant speakers to share their knowledge and to teach us and show us and um, so and also share disclosure information as well and healing modalities too sometimes then we can move forward in this turbulent world right this uh era right now so uh we are a platform where science meets spirituality as i said and we have our facebook we have our telegram which is physic underscore underscore group join us there so you can interact with the group members and uh, and 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 um, well you know um, exchange ideas and knowledge so today we are having amazing speakers we have oh sorry we we had Gosia speaking in the first session in a forum with Dale Harder and Ken 369 and it was an amazing session and it's all recorded and it will be published on our YouTube channel uh, uh Bitute or Odyssey we got three channels so do subscribe to our channels right so and then we had finished that session now we move on to the second session our second session speaker is Gitz David Pantone he's talking about his father's work his father's inventions Paul Pantone's sharing knowledge of Gitz which is global environmental energy technology Gitz is a self-induced plasma generator uh, Gitz has the ability to produce clean energy with no harmful hydro byproducts or byproducts no waste Git can be powered by waste and uh, contaminants and has no harmful byproducts no waste product Git can help heal the planet and humanity so once we finish this session uh, you can look forward to the next meeting physic meeting which is the 109th physic meeting will be on the 1st of February 2023 okay and if you want to contact me, write to crystal at truevisionofpeace.com and go to our website to look out for announcements of speakers and meetings and sometimes announcements of change of dates and all that due to unforeseen circumstances. And uh, do subscribe to our channels, Odyssey, YouTube, BitChute, and join us on our Telegram group, physic underscore group. Okay, thank you. I so I want to introduce David Pantone, our second session speaker. David Pantone is a son of Paul Pantone, the inventor of GEET, G-E-E-T, fuel processor, GFP. GEET is short for Global Environmental Energy Technology, which provides the fastest and easiest way to end poverty and pollution. So Paul Pantone was promising. And GIT is a self-induced plasma generator. And in simple terms, the GFP is a device to reduce emissions while improving fuel efficiency in all existing fuel burning equipment on the planet. GIT can be replicated at home with the free GIT plans given to humanity by Paul Pantone. This technology introduces us to a vast realm of scientific phenomena, adding to our general understanding of our world and universe, which leads us to far more advanced applications of the technology beyond simply fuel treatment. 
David is dedicated to his father's legacy by sharing knowledge of Git and working together with those interested to continue the research and development of Git. And you can um, you can get to Git's website if you go to our website and you see David Penton's name. It's all linked up to his website, which is gitinternational.com. Okay, you can write to him as well, info at gitinternational.com. All right. Now, uh, I think that's it. Uh, shall I just then pass the microphone over to you, David, so you can start your presentation right away? Hi, David? Thanks, Crystal. Hi. Uh, hey, thanks for, for the introduction and having me speak. Um, I actually, I'll be repeating myself uh, if, if I go much further. Actually, I already am. Um, I've, I've prepared a lot in a video because we've been having some power outages. Um, so do you want to play that now, Pontus? Yeah. Thank you, Crystal, for the kind and informative introduction and for inviting me to speak here today. The work you do on your website and video channels show dedication and organization as individuals and a group of whom I'm honored to be a part. Your mission statement mirrors my own, and I believe we can together move rapidly, taking greater steps, strides, and leaps toward a harmonious and beautiful future through the spirit of mindfulness and responsible technology usage. I'm honored and thrilled to join forces with you in this meeting and beyond, and to be in the company of those who have spoken here before me. I have to thank my dad, Paul Pantone, for dedicating his life to the betterment for the future generations of humanity, all creatures and nature in general, and for all the sacrifices he made in his life to create and perfect Geet, which I am here to present to you today. Last but not least, thank you to all the others who have aided in bringing Geet to the level of public awareness where it is today. Thank you to everyone in this meeting and everyone watching this video. Thank you all for being, in whatever way you can be, co-creators of our shared vision. I'm honored to be here to present to you the Geet Fuel Processor, invented by my father, Paul Pantone, in the early 1980s. Geet stands for Global Environmental Energy Technology. I believe Geet is the fastest and easiest way to end poverty and pollution that there is not one technology that would be more beneficial to all life on Earth in this era of history than the Geet Fuel Processor. First, I'd like to briefly describe what the Geet Fuel Processor does, as well as some more advanced potential applications of Geet. Then I would like to suggest how we can strategize our approach to navigate through the research and development of all different types of equipment without needing millions of dollars up front. To begin to maximize our rate of progress, we only need funding proportional to the progress we've already made. We will only ever need as much funding as we can completely justify through demonstration. The GEET fuel processor is known to be directly adaptable to any existing piece of fuel burning equipment. Name it, from generators and furnaces to cargo ships and power plants. If it burns fuel, you can retrofit it with a GEET fuel processor. You can even produce excess fuel from smaller GEET retrofitted engines to power larger standard engines, reducing the amount of research and development needed to get all fuel burning equipment retrofitted with GEET and running far more efficiently and completely clean. GEET has been described as an onboard self-inducing plasma reactor. The GEET fuel processor creates what I understand to be like a miniature lightning storm. With power reclaimed from the engine, which would otherwise be wasted, it decomposes practically anything you can put into it, into a highly efficient, clean burning fuel. From my understanding, the only things which cannot be used as a base for GEET fuel are synthetic oils and antifreeze. But anything else that you can vaporize or gasify can be put into the GEET fuel processor and changed by this lightning storm, aka the plasma reaction. This spectacle has been observed and reported to me by several researchers, and I hope to either personally recreate that again very soon, or otherwise view and film it where it's already being done. 
Again, you can turn almost anything into fuel with heat. Plastics, septic fumes, waste oils, toxic waste, radioactive waste, all waste basically. One of the things you could call GEET is the ultimate waste disposal tool. Achieving zero pollution with GEET is actually very easy. In fact, my dad, on many pieces of equipment, had over 20% oxygen coming from the exhaust pipe. Many other GEET dealers and researchers have also achieved the full GEET reaction and have shared documentation with me of their results. One I can share with you now is licensed GEET dealer Dan Easton in the UK. His website is geetlife.weebly.com. You can go to his frequently asked questions page, click GEET vaporizing carburetor or plasma reactor, and that will take you to comprehensive text and videos regarding the carbon breakdown which you can expect to occur with a normal internal combustion engine, with GEET functioning as a vaporizer, and finally with GEET fully reacting. Over the course of decades, hundreds of novel scientific phenomena have been discovered with GEET. The implications and applications of GEET can benefit humanity in ways spanning far beyond those limited to fuel treatment. Much of the GEET class is dedicated to studying these phenomena and possibilities, as well as focusing on understanding the form and function of the GEET fuel processor. To inquire about GEET classes, buy the book of GEET, and find more ways you can become involved with GEET, including research partnership opportunities, send an email to me at info at geetinternational.com or david at growindomes.com. You can also start learning more about GEET today by subscribing to the Tesla Tech YouTube channel and watching many of my dad's previous presentations and demonstrations of GEET. For many years, my dad taught thousands of people how GEET works and licensed researchers, dealers, manufacturers, and instructors. GEET also reached an enormous amount of people across the world with the free GEET plans he released in 1998, which allows everyone to retrofit a personal small engine with GEET. Turnkey generators, kits, parts, plans, and many other official and operable GEET retrofitted equipment and advanced GEET research equipment like the GEET Life Rod Reader have all been available through GEET dealers in the past. A combination of the general suppression of society and directly upon GEET dealers, or perhaps just the growing pains of humanity, have heavily contributed in the eventual inactivity of nearly all of them presently, except one active dealer in Canada and myself in California. A large number are simply waiting to be given equipment or plans to sell or for enough resources to do research and development and or produce the equipment themselves. I tried to mitigate the issues several years ago with a grassroots network I attempted to organize called GEET Club. To see that the progress made with GEET would accumulate rather than dissipate, but I didn't have the financial backing at the time to see it through as it requires full-time dedication to work. Over the course of months, I became financially upside down, with having received a total of zero donations in response to several newsletters I sent out to thousands of recipients about Geek Club. I believe most of you will identify with me when I say, some people are beyond dedicated in heart and soul to disclosing means of universal peace and wealth. We are prepared to give our lives to ensure this legacy. Part of making that work is living a long, healthy life. I had to put a hold on Geek Club until I was able to survive what it would cost me to launch it successfully. I began building geodesic domes for funding as well as a way to share means of immediate prosperity with everyone I work with. And it got me here. I've been able to secure a stable living space and work area, and at this point I'm able to afford to do some personal Geek research and development at a very moderate pace. But Geek is due millions of hours of research and development. My goal is to facilitate that by sending additional support to researchers, and I would like to put full time into GEET to do so. I will organize any kind of fundraising I can to strategically and non-disruptively bring more and more GEET products into availability.
I want to start to keep our web pages, social media pages, and mailing lists up to date with upcoming classes both online and on location all around the world, available Geet products, and all other Geet news. I'm personally working with occasional help from friends on retrofitting a 4000 peak watt generator. We have not been able to put a lot of time into it yet, but it's moving forward, and with a little more public awareness and support, our progress will accelerate. One highest purpose of this project is to supply all GEET dealers with a new set of plans and piece of equipment ready for sales. I wish to incentivize all licensed and experimental GEET researchers to be as open as possible with their progress to ensure that that progress isn't lost in the future. Giving out the new set of free GEET plans will make GEET immediately accessible to millions of more people and provide licensed GEET dealers and instructors new jobs like instructing students, training mechanics, manufacturing parts, selling parts and kits and fully retrofitted GEET generators, and giving technical support. It will provide them the regularity of funding to carry out their duties as well as pursue further research and development in coordination with all others through GEET International Institute. I would like to meet as many people as possible who have had experiences with GEET and my dad, especially those with experience seeing and or operating GEET retrofitted equipment, to document interviews and or GEET demonstrations. I know there is much they can all contribute to our research as well as preserving the experiences they have had in documentary form. If I am speaking of you, I implore you to reach out to me. Let's distill and manifest the golden information you have to share with the world. One gentleman who purchased a building in Texas found an abandoned GEET retrofitted engine in great condition. It has original documents including some handwritten by my dad. He is asking $1,500 or barter of collectible items. With your involvement, we can collect that GEET retrofitted engine for future studies and showings, and continue to gather more lost or hidden GEET equipment and data from all around the world. Again, if you have anything to contribute to that, or would like to otherwise help with any of the endeavors I've mentioned, please contact me and let me know. Another immediate purchase we hope to make is a portable gas analyzer, which runs about $3,000. Including those things and some more essential tools, I think we can get through the first phase of our generator project with only about $10,000, give or take. At that point, I think we can have this generator ready, or at least mostly ready, for the free plans and other various forms of distribution. Again, to get involved with any of that, please contact me via email. My main focus is trying to make it easier for people to understand GEET and to get involved with GEET. I think we have an obstacle or two between us and Utopia other than your endless variety of men in black. I feel focusing on a few things is probably necessary in order to take effective steps to improve the things we are able to improve. If you agree, I hope to hear from you and work with you very soon. That's it. <laughs> uh, would you like me to um, go through it again uh, live? Well, that is, that was a good good presentation, David. I don't know what you're so concerned about. <laughs> go on, I I mean, you continue with what you have to do and say. All right. Well, um, I, what I would like to do is um, have a. Adam Abraham introduced from here if Pontus is available to put him on. Um, I have a, a he, he interviewed my dad for a DVD that he created, but he could I think it would be better if he if he talked about it himself. It, it was published years ago and he's about to publish it again. And I'd really like everybody to know about it um, because it's a great way to um, learn about Geet and my dad and um, see some of Adam's awesome 
work. So, um, uh, Adam, would you mind continuing uh, Adam's introduction? I mean, Pontus, would you mind continuing Adam's introduction? Uh, and, and we can continue the dialogue. Well, I just unmuted myself. Is that OK? <laughs> Great. Hi, Adam. Please Hello. Do. Yeah, hi, Thanks Adam. Thanks for coming on today. Well, uh, I appreciate the invitation. This was, well, first of all, I'll say, but I, I don't believe in mistakes, uh, but this turned out somewhat extemporaneous or serendipitous, however you want to say it, because um, several, several uh, sometime last week, uh, I met a, a good friend of mine who um, hadn't seen for a while, and he brought up the subject of plasmoids. And it was a subject he, something he'd never heard of before. And, and the only person, the first and only person I had ever heard the term plasmoid was from Paul. And uh, he explained to me witnessing and seeing what it is. And uh, so in actually support of getting more information about the plasmoids, uh, I started looking over, watching my videos again, because um, I met with Paul in, I think it was in 2011. Uh, I met him at the Tesla Tech Conference that year, and uh, I interviewed him there. I had a uh, uh, podcast of my own called Talk for Food, and I produced uh, about 250 episodes of that show. It was a one-hour program. And Paul was one of my interviews at, from Tesla Tech that particular year. And uh, when I showed him the podcast, when he listened to it, uh, he called me back and said, eh, it's all right. It's OK. He said, but if, if you really want to learn something, you need to just come out here and talk to me. <laughs> okay? He said, you can do a lot more. So I actually did. I went to Oklahoma and, and spent three three, four days down there. And we just hung out um, in his shop, sitting at a table, sitting by the refrigerator and talked. And I had my camera on. And so I, I produced, um, edited, edited that down to like a three, uh, three plus hours of just conversation about many, many things that uh, are impacted by many applications that are impacted by uh, plasma, what it is, and what what can be done with with geet and so um so yeah i, I got a thing or two because uh paul and i became friends over that years i mean we're, we're we're kindred spirits uh david and i were talking this morning and uh because there was this little piece in the video where paul has a reaction to this word can't and um and i shared with david uh because that's something that uh uh, he was experienced, you know, with Paul and, and, and said only one other person in my life uh, told, had the same kind of reaction uh, to the word can't basically telling me to take it out of my vocabulary. And that was my dad. And so, uh, so we share a lot of uh, synergies um, and, um, and vision and concern and care for everything else. So that's an opening, at least. Um, I have, um, uh, I, it's interesting when I hear the word um, that GEET is a plasma generator, um, I continue to want to add this word, and, this is, and that's the word field. It's a plasma field generator. And um, there are plasma generators, but I don't know to what extent there are plasma field generators, but some of the things that he explained in the video, in fact, uh, is that there's a specific type of field that's one stable for one thing and very coherent. And in the stability and the coherence of that field, many things uh, that are really beneficial can occur. So uh, for the interest of this conversation, I'd like to make that contribution to to the perception of what this thing is. Where else do I go? <laughs> uh, oh, that's okay. great, Adam. I was hoping that you you would um, maybe tell them uh, about the video a little bit since you're since you're publishing it again. 
Uh, sure. And Pontus can share that th that thumbnail image of it. Sure, sure. Well, I'm going to contact the, you. Sure, sure. It, we call, I uh, titled the video, uh, Indelible Promise. And out of those three days of, of visiting and talking and conversation, uh, it was the general sense that I felt I received uh, in terms of not just what plasma can do and the field, but it's really uh, the promise of nature, the promise of the natural law is the promise of the, the laws of the universe. They are indelible and they are unerring and unfailing. And that is the idea, the concept. And in a way of speaking, in my sometimes not humble opinion, is something that we have overlooked. Uh, we as a society are believing in a lot of things and a lot of ideas that are very transient and um, out of sorts with, with nature. And until we actually extract our, our consciousness out of those, the, that's, you know, there's something within us that's also indelible that will start to shine. So the... Um, the video is called Indelible Promise. There's three DVDs and, and or three videos. It's about three plus hours. And he talked about so many, many different applications, not just about what the Geek um, uh, processor does and how it works, but we talked about different types of ways it could be used. For example, like uh, how it could be used to, um, I, I want to say, um, like, a, like a cowboy can... Um, can can subdue, say, a, a steer, or, you know, bronco. Uh, we could roping um, tornadoes, for example. How the how understanding how tornadoes work, we can actually instead of suffering the damages from uh, tornadoes, there are certain things that could be done that were made possible because at one point in time, they they have managed to do something out in the, in the shop. And there was a whole bunch of little tornadoes <laughs> going around on the floor. He said there was some water uh, uh, on the ground, and this water had been energized in some kind of way with the GEET processor. And there are a whole bunch of little tornadoes just flitting around uh, until such time that they uh, they dissipated. But he he also learned it how learned how to ground them, and so. Paul was very much one about teaching, about learning, about sharing what he had come to know and how it would be much more instead of spending so much time and energy chasing uh, tornadoes and and dealing with the effects of their uh, of the phenomena itself, that people with proper knowledge, uh, having seen and worked with these on a small scale, they could develop the tools that uh, could be put kept in a, a, you know, a highway patrolman's car. Uh, and when they're going around a place where there's tornadic activity, there's something that could be done to literally ground the, uh, the effect. And it is subject, it is responsive to uh, changes in, in heat, for example. It can, they can be steered. Oh, so many things can be done. Um, he mentioned uh, x-rays in the sense that because they discovered at one point that when exposed to a plasma field, that um, uh, photographic paper, I believe is what he was saying, would actually could show um, the human the tissue, uh, but it would work like an x-ray, but it was not destructive. It wasn't harmful whatsoever. Uh, that was something that was really uh, surprising and, and interesting when he talked about like Brown's gas generators, where you can cut through uh, titanium and other, uh, you know, steel with a plasma um, uh, torch. And yet, if you move across the hand, it won't, um, it won't harm. And, and or if you dropped a uh, banana through a plasma field, It'll go through, but if you dropped, uh, you know, metal or something inanimate or inorganic, it would it would vaporize. 
And so the, the possibilities of basically uh, dis, disabling, I guess, for lack of a better word, um, radioactive material, or because we're talking about transmutation, it's what it is. It's a, a plasma field can basically dis, disassemble. Uh, in fact, one of the things after I watched the videos, I was going to contact um, uh, David because I first of all, I want to see how things were going. And uh, in addition to that, I, I have been involved, I am involved with uh, the use of, an, of another technology or another approach, which are complementary to all of these things, where we use a, we have a device that we put on a, on a water line and it vortexes the water. And so they are, they're called structuring devices. I call them vortex generators, but the, uh, what they do are very, very, uh, I think they're, they're fundamental to in improving and restoring the energetic properties and also in 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 increasing the uh, functionality. People don't think about water being functional or degrees of functionality, but uh, there are degrees and we are often using much, you know, the lower scale of it, first of all. But in conjunction with a uh, GEET processor, uh, we've been looking at researching ways that we can restore water, not simply treat water. Uh, what, we, what we've got now and the way we do things today is treatment. And most of the time is chemical, is chemicalization of it, which is not really helping anyone. Uh, but by vortexing the water and with some other methods that we, we are using, which are all nature-based again, um, I think that uh, adding a GEET um, a component to a system would be one that would allow us to literally restore the energetic properties to the water, the health sustaining uh, properties of water. And that includes the electrical and the energetic. Uh, we don't tend to think of ourselves as electrical in our, in our nature uh, when uh, the universe is electric. You know, so um, the possibilities, for example, um, uh, in water treatment, one of the big buzzwords is PFAS, P-F-A-S, which are uh, microplastics. And um, I'm pretty sure that between and in conjunction with vortexing and other things that we can do specifically in like in wastewater treatment, uh, a, a GEET um, station or a GEET uh, uh, element as a part of that system would basically be the last thing that would be necessary. Uh, vortexing alone would actually help in the concentration of that material, that which is it's called microplastics for a reason, very, very tiny. But vortexing would actually help ac uh, accelerate the agglomeration and concentration of those materials to make it easier to either um, filter out or, or remove. But a, um, a GEET processor, a GEET station, I think would just be like, it just make it that much even better. So there are many, many things. And that's partly what prompted me to contact David this morning. And I had no idea it would lead to this, but that's just part of it. The video itself just has so many things doesn't have action and you know no explosions or anything like that. But the information in there, as well as uh, uh, Paul's uh, perspective and his dedication uh, to uh, uh, an objective, uh, we want to we want to make a difference in this world. We and that means we've got to change things that we become accustomed to. And um, Paul was willing to. Well, well, he did it, you know, and, and, and he set a, a great example. So um, those are some of the things. Wow. <laughs> you are so good with what you said, Adam. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a legend, isn't he, Paul? <laughs> well, he is. Uh, I put the video, I had a uh, a website up at at one point uh, in doublepromise.com and as I told David say so, well uh, it's I'll put it this way um, we live in interesting times because um, there are 
so many things that are normal today that we have accepted as norms, uh, when you really get into their um, the, the origins uh, of our, our behaviors and our practices, they are a major part of, our, of the social and health and environmental problems that we are exist we are uh, actually dealing with as a society and yet we oftentimes don't seem to see our um our contribution that we're making by con giving what's familiar so much weight uh what we need to do is begin to give the unfamiliar but the inspired that's within us more weight than we give the familiar but depressing we tend to give a lot of weight to what's depressing and familiar because everyone's talking about it and the un and the inspired that's within us us uh, oftentimes unless we're giving some life to it ourselves doesn't really get much of the light of day uh paul certainly was an exception to that um yeah i'll call it rule and um i consider myself one too uh, yet we have a long way to go. There's a lot to, still to be done. And it's an internal thing. It's not, you know, to me, I, I don't see it as a struggle. I don't see it as a war. It's, it's some peace that we have to actually make within ourselves. And that's what opens, I say, the, the, the door, so to speak. But it comes from our, our inside, you know, out. It's so sad what they did to him to stop him on his tracks, yeah. And James has a question on that line. Can anyone comment on how he got locked away and uh, and did he eventually get out? <laughs> James, you should speak up. Well, um, there, there, there was a lot of information on a site called geekfriends.net, mm -hmm. which I think that you would be able to find on the archive.org Wayback Machine, and it could give you a much more thorough explanation uh, than I should in, uh, to be brief about it. Uh, but basically, he was he was railroaded into a mental institution prison, uh, eventually on claims that his technology couldn't work. And the only thing that really saved him was that he'd given away the plans for free and prove everyone had the chance to prove for themselves that it worked mm -hmm. and um help from uh tesla tech who i, who I mentioned in my my presentation uh that they even showed up to the courthouse uh hundreds of people deep uh, from what i understand to uh, yes, which that's, that's, really that's one way of saving the lives of the inventors it, it, it still took a few years to get him out, mm -hmm. but I think that he might have otherwise not have made it out at all. Oh. Uh, but he did make it out um, after three and a half years uh, locked up, and, it, and, it, and it, it took a tremendous toll on his health. But he, he had about another uh, decade uh, to, to travel and be with family and, and, and do his best to get, get out there. Uh, but before, before that, Toll finally, uh, you know, took its took its uh, final. How oh, did you and your mother cope with that? Him being locked away for so long. I'm sorry, I'm not asking these questions. Must have been. Oh. Painful. Um. Gosh, I mean, I guess how you you cope with anything, you know, you just sort of adapt to the the things that you you can't can't immediately change and you find the ways that you can take gradual steps toward the way you would rather things be at, at first i i didn't know uh whether or not uh, he, he was hiding himself or he'd been taken away or something he just disappeared off the map this was uh, at the same time when uh his doors were locked on him in his instant in his uh, school in Preston, Idaho. He wasn't able to get in, and then they hauled him down to when he was in Utah. They they hauled him into court and in in into that situation I just described. Um, so when he disappeared off the map, I thought intuitively I I I had I had faith I could I could track him down really quickly, but I didn't know if he meant 
to be hiding himself. And uh, but regretfully, and it took me a year and a half to learn through the grapevine where he actually was. I don't know if I actually would have learned that quickly because they just really swept him away. But uh, in any case, uh, I joined the team to get him out. And uh, and after t after two years of, of, of being part of the team successfully, um, we were able to put pressure on everyone involved uh, in having got him in there and, and part of him, him being in there, whether or not they were knowing accomplices in, in, in uh, the side agendas of the matter. Uh, we eventually had enough people, you know, held, held accountable enough in the situation that they had to release him. Mm -hmm. Paul, is there any, Paul, sorry, David, <laughs> I call you my father's name, your father's name. Is there anything that you want to add to your presentation before I pass the microphone over to co-chair Fres Fresel? <clears throat> Well, um, yeah, actually, uh, unfortunately, I had one other guest speaker to join, but I think that he got wrapped up in an emergency because he's on call and might be fixing a gas leak, life or death kind of thing. But I have one thing to show you. Oh, and he's the GEET instructor, Josh Green, who I had mentioned. I just wanted to give you a little taste of uh, what you might start to learn in, in class. But there was a bit of that in the presentation anyway. Um, but I'll give you a little bit right now, which is um, this is a rod that I took out of the generator that I'm working on right now. And the, the bottom is, is has got a tip, a uh, convex tip, and the, the other end is concave. That's the top end when it's positioned as it should be when it's running in the reactor. So here I have a compass for driving. So if you're driving, uh, east, that means that you'll see the E. So actually the compass is kind of labeled backwards, but hopefully that doesn't matter uh, too much to this demonstration. Hopefully it's not too confusing. So I'll, I'll let the compass settle. So I know which direction it's supposed to be facing. I'm just waiting for it to get, there we go. Okay. I don't know why it's wobbling so much. So if I bring the, the, this might be hard to do on this camera. Okay, so if I bring the bottom of the rod in, then it's gonna attract the N, which is really the S. Can you see that at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if I pull it away, it'll balance back out. And then I'll bring in the top of the rod and it'll bring over Oh, why is it still doing the same thing? Let me do it again. I might not be coming straight at the middle. Huh. Let me try. Uh, I'm not looking at it. Let me go. Let me look at it from above. Then I can see what I'm really doing. So I'm going directly at the E now. A little bit. And to the it brings me the north. Oh, you can't see it anymore. <laughs> this is, I'll have to, I'll have to link you to a video for this if it's not going to work out. Let me start over again from from here, okay. So I'll bring in the concave side. It attracts the north, which is labeled S. Concave sides on the top. I'll bring in the convex side and it brings in the south, which is labeled N. Mm -hmm. Then I'll flip the rod over so now the convex side, which just brought in the south labeled N, brings in the north labeled S. And if I slide the rod up, convex side now down, brings in the south labeled N. The south is a little bit weaker draw than the north usually. Did that show up pretty well that time? Yep. Yeah. Okay, another thing I want to show you about it is uh, here are some uh, some iron dust, and it doesn't pick up any anything. It, it won't oh. pick up the smallest bit of iron. And this and just to prove that it's iron dust, here's a 
Here's a magnet. <laughs> if, there we go. Yeah, now we see it, yeah. Okay. So it's it's not a typical magnetic field that, that this holds for two reasons. It won't pick up any iron and it also, um, the field all, always remains positive, north on top, south on the bottom, positive on top, negative on the bottom, no matter which way you flip the actual material. And that is odd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David, is, to your knowledge, is that paramagnetic? Paramagnetic, I like that. I think I use the term supermagnetic once or something like that, like superpositioning, but paramagnetic, I like that. Well, uh, paramagnetic is a state um, and it is uh, also like a field. And it's a very important one. In fact, there are books that are written about them. In fact, I got one right here called Paramagnetism. This is by uh, Phil Callahan. So it's very possible. And in fact, for that matter, I'd say life is paramagnetic. Okay, so it's we have paramagnetic properties or, as, as well and respond to them. So, um, but yeah, it, it would not be have the, the strength of a magnetic field, but it's a subtle uh, uh, attraction and a subtle force. Uh, so um, anyway, just wanted to throw that in. Awesome, yeah, cool. I'm cool. That's awesome you have the book right next to you. Just happen to have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at any rate, okay. Right. Well, that that could be it, or I, I could tell you a little bit the, about the exhaust coming out of an internal combustion engine. It's going to flow through a pipe in the GEET reactor that goes directly around the outside of the fuel line, running in the opposite direction. I can pop up a diagram and continue you want. Yep. Where is the proper diagram? Let me share screen. And this is something I scribbled on paint. Okay, can you see that that little drawing? Yes. My mouse on it? Can you see can you see the mouse hovering over it? Yep. 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 Okay, okay, great. Although I've I've it labeled all right. Um so you've got the exhaust pipe in black going uh, the, away from the engine, the direction of the, the hot gas is pointing. Then through the center of that exhaust pipe, you have a section of the fuel pipe. Uh, they don't, the gases don't mix, but one passes past the other, like a, a cold front and warm front creating an electrostatic charge uh, in the clouds, getting ready to make lightning. Uh, then simultaneously, you've got the vortexes uh, created by the, the fuel vapors going around this bullet-shaped rod, which is the one I just showed you, and uh, Venturi effect acceleration into the vacuum created by the suction of the engine. The vortex is creating magnetic fields within the vacuum with the electrostatic generation. I think that's all you need for the, uh, to, to put it crudely anyway, all you need for the heat reaction to occur. And, and even though I've only be, just begun the uh, research and development phase on this generator that I'm working on, and I don't have all of the diagnostic equipment, diagnostic equipment I need to streamline it uh, and get right to the point, um, this rod was charged from that reactor. So I am getting somewhere quickly enough. I, mean, I, I know, uh, uh, I, I think I saw somewhere that uh, the length of the uh, bullet uh, is depending on how, uh, which type of fuel you use to uh, Split. Right. Um, so from what I understand that um, the, the length of the rod is important because of the length of the molecule um, needs that much distance to accelerate and break apart into the lower vacuum 
higher electrical field thing. <laughs> uh, so longer molecules need longer, longer rods to break down. So if you have a rod that's too long, um, then it's been said that the molecules will even start to recombine and, be, and become you know, le less like heat gas, yeah. less volatile. Um, so you, you can run multiple fuels past one rod like you sort of do with the bubbler, but it's not ideal. So ideal would be two rods uh, in, uh, in parallel or? Well, I mean, one fuel at a time per reactor would be simple. Yeah, yeah. And if you have two dual reactors running one generator, then you might need to overcome certain obstacles like interference between the fields, mm -hmm. the size of the engines, determining the size of the reactors might determine the size of the fields and those exact formulas are things that we'll have to, you know, produce throughout lengthy research and development. Um, but we, we, I mean, we have some, some, some hints from the past that uh, this, this worked, this didn't. <laughs> uh, one thing I didn't mention is um, on the blue in uh, engine reactor set that is in the picture of my dad uh, and and several others uh, that I um, that I'd seen my dad build would all form cold uh, not just cold sheets of frost on the exhaust pipe when they're running in the summer. Oh, yeah, that's hey, Pontus has been following your dad's work, and he's the one who invited you to visit. Pontus is the head of uh, physics R and D. So, uh, Pontus, you probably want to start off the Q and A with Fres. Uh, yeah. yeah. Whoever yeah. has any question, uh, unless you have finished your questions. And thank you for um, finding finding me and getting me on here, Pontus. Please. I'm delighted that you are here. Uh, Press, do I have any questions? Yeah, I'm going to force the stop on the share screen. Uh, yeah, this is, you're talking with the geeks crowd, the, not the geek, <laughs> the geeks, G-E. <laughs> the geeks, geeks. <laughs> we're, we're the brainiacs around here. But anyway, the question I have for you today is I noticed there was a design change. Uh, I remember your dad's, uh, basically are in black iron or steel and your new design has brass fittings in it what was the reason for switching over to the brass fittings uh it, it may or may not have been situational depending on other factors going on and it sounds like it had something to do with grounding uh, something that I, I've heard about, about grounding versus not grounding the generator um, is the frequencies that will transmit, which might be mistaken for other frequencies, including down Black Hawk, Black, Black Hawk helicopters or something I don't remember specifically. So um, it, it may have been a functional or, or, or it may have just been uh, some sort of uh, byproduct like like um what was available off the shelf <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, the reason i ask that is because i do a lot of plumbing and so when i see plumbing apparatuses put together there's things that i look at especially in dissimilar metals when we go from uh let's say aluminum to steel or from uh steel to copper we have really bad problems with uh, electrolysis and by going, by putting brass in between dissimilar metals, you isolate that electrical field so that you don't have the, uh, the buildup. So you, uh, I think you, you might, it, you've kind of answered the question because with you're going straight from the engine clear out to the end of the exhaust pipe, you're all in the same fields. It's one thing, materials. But if there's other things that react in, and you've got a reactor in the middle, you may needed to have isolated that reaction chamber by using your brass in between, right? Where that was, where your center rod is. So I commend you from, 
a plumber's side of the thing looking at it, I think you did something very good. <laughs> uh, could it be similar to the Joe cell uh, where you have an aluminum uh, piece just at the end? In the bismuth. Uh, yeah, right. similar <laughs> things. I couldn't say. No. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, that's all I had, Pontus. Uh, you guys go right ahead. Um, I've got another urgent call coming in. Okay. Uh, hey, Mike, did you have some questions? Uh, no, thank you. Not at the moment, actually. I think uh, one thing uh, I will just add, uh, as Paul described in um, Indelible Promise, one of the things he wanted to do was to build actually a larger uh, system uh, and it was large enough that would create a plasma field that was large enough for a, a, an individual to actually get in or be enclosed within uh, laying down or in some kind of way, but because it was stable, uh, because it was uh, or is uh, coherent, essentially that is, according to Paul, that is the our normal. That's a healthy field, and and essentially it would be full spectrum. It would be one that a person, if they sat in or was in that field for a sufficient amount of time, uh, with whatever issue they had. Um, it would they would start to normalize with their essential essentially their normal natural homing pattern and so um, that was and you know, it got a lot of excitement out of me too in the course of uh, talking about it but yeah. uh, there is a book that he uh, I almost call it a book it was like a uh, notebook full of stuff over a hundred different um, applications, uses, uh, things that could be done, uh, and that he had basically documented. And so, um, so yeah, that was part of it. Yeah, that is very interesting because we are also uh, interested in uh, med beds, med pods, and setting up uh, our day team for that. Well, the, there is a there's two things along the the, um, the young lady at the end of the first one. She she brought up that subject of consciousness, which I was so happy to hear, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I and I'll say we. When I say we, I'm talking. I include myself. Um, we get sometimes wrapped up in the gadgets, the gasmo, the the gizmos, the widgets, etc. Uh, and we oftentimes ignore consciousness. We or, we ignore the fact, actually, that it is by consciousness. If, if a tumor is present, the tumor is a result of something else. And it's not about because the tumor itself was bad. Uh, the, the, oftentimes, the thoughts, the thinking uh, that we embrace is off the mark. And, if it's, and it's, it, it's counterproductive to truth. In fact, uh, point of we talk about germ theory, which is the basis of standardized medicine today, is it's not scientifically, it's not naturally uh, founded in natural law. Uh, there's no good or bad in in nature. They're just simply what is, and there are conditions, and we we ignore our environment, and we have become blind to the uh, and accepting of the consequences of of well over almost 200 years or over 200 years of improper, incorrect medical thinking or, or biological thinking. And we've been passing it down and passing it down. And until we actually get into that part as well, it's about like stepping out of all that stuff. This is weight of thinking, of incorrect thinking that we are carrying. Until we change that, uh, we, we don't free ourselves. 
So sometimes waiting for the gizmo to do the thing and, and we sit back and wait, we can still be sitting in our wrong, uh, incorrect way of thinking. And I'm not necessarily about something else, about ourselves, about our own nature, our own value, our own power. Mm -hmm. So ultimately that's consciousness too. And uh, as we learn, there was a, um, some of you may be familiar with the work of Dr. Uh, David Hawkins. Uh, he wrote the book called Power Versus Force some 20 some odd years ago and a, a number of other books too, but uh, he presented and introduced the concept of a map of consciousness. And I thought that was a cool thing to start seeing our ways of thinking laid out in such a way that you could see the, the energetic weight of a way of thinking uh or the lack or, or the brightness you can you can use a number of ways to um to think about it but ultimately uh we choose uh let's say you can choose we have these ideas passed down from generation to generation from person to person and the ones that we we stick to with or stick with us then we are living by those things until such time that we either awaken to well that's not correct um and you let go of it that's yep. how we become free of these things absolutely well said uh -huh. adam <laughs> uh yeah. i think uh yeah bill who's um, building a med pod is agreeing with you with his head nodding away <laughs> and we at physic absolutely that's why uh pontus uh, brought me to Sweden to teach self-hypnotism to the team because we believe that the team needs the consciousness from the, uh, the, the, the connection of the inner self and the higher self from the subconscious level to unleash the vast potential from within. And not only that, the, the connection to the higher self is very important. That would manifest a lot of things that are in alignment with creators loving light. For all of well, us for our highest good yeah i think one thing before you go uh uh you might be of interest uh i was touched by dr hawkins map of consciousness i think it's a super super tool and uh he was one of my guests on my on my podcast years ago um i think it was like 2012. uh over the last this past year over the last few months in fact um it's such a super tool but i came I came to a point where I have I have recontextualized it. I have actually revised uh, the map of consciousness in a different way to, it, as far as I feel at least, it would help people to start seeing more clearly, not only how how we think predominantly, because it's not a it's not a matter you're always this or you're always that. We are all over the map, okay, in consciousness. Uh, the totality of what all of that is becomes what your vibration is, what you what what you let in and what you don't. Yeah. But I did create something, and it's different, but inspired by the map of consciousness. And I basically synthesized two words into one: uh, the words for oneness and consciousness. And I synthesized that into the one word called consciousness okay first of all and secondly uh i created this this diagram this this image called the map of consciousness this is all new it's not on a website or any place uh, this is the only place you're going to find it right now but i think all would be interested in it and at some point in time uh, i am building a i am building a website the site's called loveishome.co mm -hmm. and so uh my i'll have products and things on that but ultimately home is is love love is home Absolutely. uh i i even huh, gosh i even designed this mm -hmm. this is a cup but mm -hmm. but the terms here in kanji is this is love is home right okay um, so at any rate the map of consciousness is uh i'd be willing and uh i actually need to get some of the feedback at some point in time so if someone's interested, I'd be happy to, to share and, and chat about that sometime. 
Thank you, Adam. We need to wrap up now because uh, it's quite a long drawn meeting and our members in Europe are needing to have a good night's sleep because they have to wake up early to work in the morning. Right. Um, is there anything else that you want to say, um, David? Because it's your show, your presentation before we, uh, well, wrap it up and end the meeting. Hey, thanks again for giving us the opportunity to present Geet to you guys here, Crystal. And uh, the the more um, that we that we all work together, the faster this is all going to come together. But uh, you can count on me um, being there the whole way. <laughs> oh, thank you, David. It's such an honor to have you here talking about your dad's work. And thank you, Adam, for helping David present as well. You've been such a good friend of his dad's. <laughs> and, My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, uh, just thank you for bringing David in. We have a question from John. Uh, uh, can I be a licensed git person? Uh, yeah, email me uh, info at geekinternational.com. Yeah. And uh, we'll you... talk about whatever well, details to work that out. Is that our own John? John came. Yeah, you can get uh, David's email address from me, or David, you can just type your email address on chat now so everybody can get it too. Yeah. Um, Press, uh, is no, there anything else good. you want to say before we end? What about you, Kian and, and uh, Dale? Do you have anything to add to the equation? I'm good. Great. And uh, we always have the information at the True Vision of Feeds Peace website. Uh, yes. under phys egg mm -hmm. for everybody to go to afterwards but yes save your chats back to you crystal thank you uh i i want to thank matthew matthew elliott for being such a super trooper of a brother a physic brother to help out with the transcription and everything that uh, needed done last minute uh, <laughs> like, like quick 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 and he jumps in to help thank you matt Matt, don't worry about David. Uh, David's uh, transcription because he's going to pass me his uh, his notes for his presentation. So you don't have to go through 22, 22 or forty five thousand words. <laughs> anyway, you send me over what what you've got if you want me to do it. I'll do it. I sure will, bro. Thank you so much. So, uh, friends, that's it, right? James, James, you have anything to say, James? We're wrapping up now. No, thank you, everybody. Have a great day, right. wherever and you are. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. There being no other business, this meeting, the 108th visit meeting, is now adjourned to the 109th meeting on the 1st of February. <laughs> Hopefully, we can make it on time on the 1st. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Namaste. Happy New Year to all. Bye, Crystal. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Dale. Dale, we'll meet up. Okay, Dale. You bet. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Good being here. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Mona. Dale. Hey, Mona. Bye. Hello there. Bye, Kian. Thank you. Hey. We miss you in, in, in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs>